Now, we all knew that just at a first glance that his new augment was going to hold up well, but the actual results, well, they're more than delightful. Najjar just bumped up a notch in everyone's books, and he has been seeing much more screen time with his new Divine Retribution augment introduced within the Dante Unbound update recently. So, if you're a fan of nuking rooms and ad clearing, then kick back and let's walk you through what you need to know right now. Starting things off with his abilities. Passive. Najjar's slides go 60% faster than any other Warframes, but they also give an extra 35% distance per slide. Now, it is a niche passive, but it does combo well with his first ability in mind. However, for those of you who aren't a fan of being different, don't worry. You can go ahead and invest and pop on his Exilus Augment mod named Control Slide, in which will disable his passive, but also provide you with a 15% increase to your power strength. Now, this is definitely one I prefer using myself. Najjar's first ability is Firewalker. Activating his ability will give Najjar some blazing boots, increasing his movement speed by 25%, and he scorches the trail left behind him. Enemies that come into contact with the trail receive heat damage. However, if allies come in contact with that trail or continue to remain on the trail, they are cleansed from any statuses that they have on them. This ability synergizes great with his second ability, in which, at the ending position of your teleport, you will overheat your fairy wind and leave a circle of flames embedded in that area. Najjar's second ability is Blazing Chakram. By tapping this ability, Najjar throws out the flaming ring of fire he has on his back towards enemies, bouncing off targets, making them more vulnerable to any sources of damage. Enemies will take heat damage if hit by the Blazing Ring of Fire, and they have an increased chance to drop health or energy orbs on death. This makes this ability fantastic offensively by debuffing enemies, but also provides great quality of life with the utility orbs provided on enemy deaths. Najjar can also also use his ability to teleport by tapping his ability again after it has been cast, resetting his double jump when airborne and able to skip over terrains if needed. Now by holding this ability down, Najjar will charge up the Chakram and increase its damage whilst also ragdolling enemies hit by it. Najjar's third ability is Warden Halo. Najjar protects himself with a ring of fire that staggers and damages enemies who are close by. When active, Warden Halo gives Najjar immunity to status effects and also provides a 90% damage redirection from Najjar to his Warden Halo health pool instead. To get the most out of this ability, during its initial cast time, Najjar and the ring are invulnerable for 3 seconds, so any incoming damage during this period of time is converted towards the final Warden Halo health pool. So, you want to be a little cocky jumping into enemies, then cast the ability, but still, be careful when doing so as you're exposed beforehand, trying to close that gap towards them. Najjar's fourth ability is Divine Spears. Enemies surrounding Najjar are impaled with fire spears that erupt from the ground, lifting and incapacitating with great crowd control and puncture damage. Now, if reactivating this ability again, Najjar will slam the enemies into the ground, dealing additional impact damage. However, with his new augment, Divine Retribution, any status effects applied on an enemy will also spread to all other impaled enemies. This makes for some really fast status spreading conditions with great ad clearing potential, especially when we start infusing some other Warframe abilities into his build within the Helm. And speaking of just that, that's where for our upcoming builds, we're going to need to replace an ability of Najjar. Now you can pick and choose whatever one you prefer to substitute. However, for myself, I think that the Firewalker is the candidate to remove here. You see that the debuffing and quality of life that the Blazing Chakram gives to us is just too good to go and get rid of, and the Warden Halo is mostly there for our protection. So let's go ahead and remove that Firewalker, and this is where I mess with two Helminth options. Dark First from Dante Subsumable provides us with an insane amount of stacked slash procs per cast, depending on how many enemies we can impale. But this damage is absolutely no joke when pairing it with the Augment's 1.5 increase to his explosions, almost acting like an expedite suffering in a way. Now, the other ability that I enjoyed was Tempest Barrage from Hydroid Subsumable. When casting this ability, it usually takes a while to build up all of those corrosive procs. However, with this augment combined, we can instantly reach a maximum corrosive procs in a scenario like this one shown here on the screen. Furthermore, if we go and add two Emerald Archon Shards into the mix, then we can fully armor strip with this ability in just a press of a button. And just when you think it's all done, Tempest Barrage has an augment named Viral Barrage 
garage in which you guessed it adds viral procs to the ability as well so in one cast you can fully apply full stacks of corrosive to armor strip whilst also applying full stacks of viral to amplify any damage done to health Alrighty, Clarky boy, show me some builds. Up first, let's go and cover the Dark First builds as this build is more practical in more areas. Range is going to be your most important stat regardless. We want to impale as many enemies as possible and range lets us do just that. So if you can squeeze in more range, then please go ahead and do so. Strength is great for pretty much everything here. You see, all of the abilities will scale off this stat, so there's pretty much no downsides increase in it. Duration isn't really required here. Now, you could hurt it a little with transient fortitude mods if you're wanting more strength. But besides from that, don't hurt it any further, but you don't really need to buff it either. And then finally, we got efficiency. Now, this is always a stat that's going to be up in the air in terms of how you handle your energy input and output. However, please go and keep in mind, Blazing Chakram will help us generate more health and energy orbs on enemy deaths. Therefore, with a combination of Prime Flow, Equilibrium and Arcing Energize setup, we will easily manage our energy input. Just keep killing those enemies affected by your second ability. As for the rest of the build, guys, it's not that deep. If you do need to substitute anything to find bonus towards your playstyle, then please go and do so. But this is just a general gist of the idea. And I will go and have a quick mention that Arkham Vitality is a great mod to synergize with a frame like this. But if you can go towards an Umbral set, then it's also just too good to benefit from. So pick and choose your poison. Arcanes. As mentioned earlier, Energize pairs well if you're hurting efficiency, but taking an equilibrium setup. So go ahead and keep this for your quality of life. Now, as for the other Arcanes, it's your call. Cool. I would personally have loved a range increase Arcane to slot in here, but those don't exist just yet. So slotting things like Mo Augmented, it'll give us scale and strength, or you can take some survival increases if you want to, things like Guardian, which also helps his ward in Halo. But overall, it's your call cool for the second Arcane. Arkham Shards. Quality of life is usually the main aspect here. This is quite a cast heavy setup, meaning you'll be rotating abilities a lot. Due to this, two times amber shards for cast speed work great, so it doesn't feel as sluggish to play. Now, as for the remaining shards, I won't lie to you, it's 100% your call. I personally prefer either Crimson for strength increases, or Azores for health or armor increases to help with survivability. Now, if you do go and use the other build shown later, you can also apply two times emerald shards, which helps the Tempest Barrage ability fully fully armor strip those enemies. So just something for you to go and keep in mind, but otherwise you have full freedom to invest whatever you like after those amber shards. Ability rotations for build number one. Alrighty, start off in either two ways. Get yourself energy with Blazing Chakram and a couple of kills with your weapons or get yourself protected with Warden Halo. You see, either of these starts are fine and then whichever you choose, just make sure you follow it with the other ability to synergize and get a good start. From there, it's all spears, baby. Cast your Divine Spears to impale as many enemies as you can, then follow that up with your Dark Verse and either watch them bleed or recast Divine to nuke them in a matter of seconds. It's a simple yet effective ad clearing Build, and I want to go and stress that point enough because unfortunately I will go and address the weakness of a build like this. You see, when it comes to Eximus units or Acolytes, you know, single target threats that have immunity to either all or certain crowd control abilities, well, they're a bit of a nuisance. Your best dealing with those threats is with your weaponry. So go ahead and bring in like a good incarnate weapon, for example, and just pick those guys off. Everyone else should fall victim to Najar's vengeance. Alrighty then, build number two. This build is more centered around the Grenier faction. By utilizing Tempest Barrage, we are definitely looking to armor strip, and that doesn't cut it against the likes of Corpus, well, as you could imagine, and with their shields. This build is relatively similar to the first. However, with the addition of another Augment, Viral Tempest, we do have to sacrifice something within this build. For me, I took a little range out of the build and focused the build more on a defensive stranglehold utilizing corners and choke points to my advantage. As for the rest of the build, again guys, it's relatively similar to what I stated previously in build number one. So if you do prefer to go and switch it up, then give this build a shot and see if you like it. Ability rotations for build number two. So we're gonna go and keep this in style and theme. Hopefully you understand that the format is centered around Nishar's fourth ability and its augment. However, for this build, we're using Tempest Barrage with Viral Barrage to strip and debuff enemies. Then by using Nishar's Blazing Chakram, we're gonna use that for our finisher. So in all honesty, pairing in the Archon Vitality in a build like this would actually make way more sense as we're focusing into those heat procs and heat damage output. This build requires 
requires a bit more of a setup and personally it falls short in comparison to the first build but i figured i'd show it anyways because i do really like seeing the instant strength and debuff combination it just tickles my brain Alrighty then how have you guys been finding the najar with his new augment and what other new augments have you guys been enjoying since their recent releases i'd love to go and hear your thoughts inside the comment section below and that's about it from me guys thank you for watching today's video a cheeky reminder that if you did enjoy please go and leave a like and share the video with a friend if you're new to the channel come subscribe but as always i'll be seeing you guys again in the next video